I'm honestly not sure why I've never recorded a video on how to win at the game of speculation. And I say that because I've created a ton of videos here on the channel that are all designed to help you be smarter about comic book collecting. And technically, speculation is a component of comic book collecting, at least in this day and age. But again, I'm not quite sure why I've never recorded a video on this. So we're going to correct that right now. Stay tuned. Reggie here and I want to welcome you to another one of my videos. In this video, I'm going to offer up some practical tips and pointers for how you can win at the game of speculation. Now, I will tell you that I am not an expert. I do not know it all, but I do have some thoughts that I want to offer up. Now, if you out there have some expertise and want to lend that expertise to the community, I definitely want to encourage you to leave your thoughts in the comment section so that we can all learn from you. With that said, the very first tip that I want to offer up is that you want to be ahead of the wave. When the alert comes out, when the rumor starts to spread, you want to be a first mover. In my mind, the speculation game is fun, but it's also about making some money. And the best way to make money is to be a first mover, to buy the book when it's $4 or $40, not when it's $400. And so if you're able to take advantage and get it while it's lower price, you can ride the wave up and then get out and actually make some cash. If you are late to the party, if you are tardy to the party, it might be best just to walk away versus trying trying to buy the book at $400, hoping that it's going to go up to $4,000. So you have to make sure that if you're not hitting that sweet spot, that you're potentially prepared to walk away. The second tip that I want to offer up is to not be greedy. And we've actually spoken about this in previous videos about the difficulty in timing the market. The ability to actually buy a comic when it is at its lowest point is really tough. And the ability to sell a comic at its peak is also incredibly tough to do. It's incredibly tough to time it. And so what you're going to have to do is to potentially get in early, ride the wave up, find a price point that makes you happy and sell and move on with what it is that you're doing. And I say this because a lot of books that potentially you will be speculating on will have some ups and downs, right? And so you don't want to buy at the top and ride it to the bottom. You also don't want to buy it at the bottom, ride it to the top, not sell because you're choosing to earn a couple of bucks and then you ride it all the way back down. So you have to give thought to how much money do you want to make? How much money is enough money for you? Will five, 10, 20, $30 really make that big of a difference if you've already made a nice chunk of change? I personally have been in this situation where I have missed out on selling a book because I wanted to get a couple of extra dollars. And it was the couple of extra dollars that I was trying to get that made me miss out on the real money. So don't be greedy, have a margin, sell it, make the money, cash out. The third tip that I wanna offer up is to not look back once you sell a comic. In my mind, one of the worst things that can happen is you sell the book you make some money, it's good money, but then you see that the book that you sold actually continues to go up in value and you start to have some seller's regret. That is very tough to deal with. So one of the pieces of advice that I typically have for people is that if you're going to sell something and you're going to make some money, have a plan for that money that you make. Potentially you take that money and you buy something else that you really want. And by doing that, that thing that you really want oftentimes will give you more satisfaction than just having a few extra dollars. And it makes that seller regret a little easier to digest. But once you sell it, don't look back. It's just much easier to keep moving forward, looking to the next deal and the next opportunity. The next tip that I want to offer up is to consider whether it makes sense for you to have some type of focus when it comes to your speculation. It is very easy to spend money. It is very easy to get an alert on your phone or get some kind of notification or watch some video and immediately go out and spend money. The challenge, of course, is that if you're spending money here, there, and everywhere, 
then you're not necessarily developing potentially some expertise and some marketplace knowledge. So by having a narrow focus, it might allow you to develop that expertise and to really get in touch with the market's dynamics. I personally, for example, don't know a ton about Star Wars. So for me to start buying Star Wars books on spec could be a little dangerous considering that I don't really know Star Wars all that well versus the Silver Age or Spider-Man books where I'm much more comfortable focusing on those things. So instead of going after Star Wars and Silver Age books and Spider-Man books and Game of Thrones books, you might want to try to ask yourself, is there a sweet spot of focus for you that actually makes sense, that allows you to better understand the dynamics of what moves that market and more importantly, what moves speculation for that market? The last and final tip that I want to offer up is to track your performance. And by your performance, essentially what I'm saying is keep notes on what you're buying, what you're selling, how much you're making, what the decision was behind the purchase and also the sale. In my head, it becomes really difficult to remember the wins and the losses as time goes on. But if you're keeping records, if you're keeping notes, it allows you to look back to figure out how you're performing or not. You may realize that you are having some incredible success in a specific area and taking losses in another. And by looking at that information and making adjustments, you actually can perform better overall by essentially cutting your losses. But if you're not keeping those notes, if you're not keeping records, it makes it really difficult to evaluate whether your speculation strategy is working or not. The other reason why you want to keep the notes, tax time. If you remember what you bought, how much you bought it for, how much you sold it for and when you sold it, taxes are a whole lot easier. With that said, we are going to wrap this video up. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch. I hope that you enjoyed the video. And if you did, I definitely want to encourage you to hit the thumbs up button and leave a comment behind. If you need to reach out to me for whatever reason, feel free to do so on Instagram at Reggie Collects. Take care. No